Okay, we're going to try this again. I'm doing something wrong. But I want to talk a little about a, a book. I don't even think I've ever discussed it on my channel. As some of you may know, I'm an author of several books. And as it says, two non, no, three, four non-fictions, and the rest of them are fiction books. But this is the book I want to talk about, Confessions, Words from the Heart. I wrote this in 2015. And it's a story about two women that I met from my past. You know how you run into people and you say, wow, what happened to you? But I'm just going to read uh, chapter one, okay? Ruby Jewel was tall and slim. Her skin was dark compared to the pale, pasty white skin of the short, barely bondage man she was hugging. She loved to hug people. They were they were an awkward pair, but the whole group was awkward, awkward, including me, simply because I was there with them. We were all misfits, if the truth were to be told. I watched everyone in the whole room. My eager eyes knew what they were doing. If they made any funny moves, I was prepared to leave the building at a moment's notice. I was really uncomfortable being there, but my curiosity outweighed my comfort. So here I was at the Street Church of God on a hot Sunday afternoon in June. My addiction was not as hard as theirs, but I was an addict too. I was only one link higher on the chain that went downhill to nowhere. The streets had been cruel to them. The track marks on their arms told the rest of their story. Many of them were toothless, or they were dirty, ragged. They wore dirty, ragged clothes. Some had recent scars from injury. There was a man there who had dried up blood on his face and hands. There were about 40 people in the makeshift church that used to be a dress shop near the edge of town in Dallas, Texas. The congregation was a mixture of people who were from the streets, including drug addicts. The pastor was a strong-willed, down-to-earth woman in her mid-forties. I suppose she was around my age. She was a single white woman who surrounded herself with the company of people who were down and out. Somehow the light of her, of her smile seemed to make them happier. She said the Lord had a calling on her life to help the drug addicts and the homeless. Although her job was hard, she did it with love and sacrifice. I felt much admiration for her as she preached the words of hope to the people in the congregation. There were no words that I could say to move such a hopeless bunch of people. The smell of shit and pinch was a stench in my nostril as I swatted flies that gathered around the food that was to be served after the service. Most of the people came for the food. Some came to have a place to be happy and dance to the music. They probably wanted to get away from the drudgery of the streets. Some even came for a safe place to sleep. There were several people who were oblivious to the noise. They called the white woman Sister Charlotte. I was invited to the church by Ruby Jewel, Ruby Jewel Oakley. I met her over the phone. She was soliciting clients for an accounting office. I was a bit skeptical when I heard her voice and told her that I didn't need the services of a CPA right now. I was struggling with my small upholstery shop and had no extra money for any unnecessary expenses. She was persistent. I took her name and number for later references. 
The conversation switched when she started talking about God and how he delivered her from a life on the streets and drugs. I found comfort in her voice, maybe because she was a black woman and maybe because I was an ex-addict who was still learning how to stay clean and sober. We talked together and found out we had more in common than just the drugs. Her father and mother knew my mom and dad. We went to my grandmother's birthday party every New Year's Day, and her parents were there too. Most likely, she and I were at the parties when we were younger. My father was her father's barber. Her father, Rufus, was a mailman in the neighborhood where the barbershop was. They played dominoes for many years. We exchanged numbers and decided that we would get to know each other. She said a prayer as we ended our conversation. At the end of the prayer, she started speaking in tongues. I was touched emotionally, but not to the point of speaking in tongues. She told me later that it was her gift from God, speaking in tongues. We finally met after weeks of phone conversation. I went to her house on a Friday night. We were going to watch movies and eat a few snacks. Just from the phone conversation, I could tell that she had been through a lot. An older woman answered the door. She told me that she lived with her mother, so I assumed the woman was her mother. She wasn't very polite when she came to the door and told me to wait outside until she got her daughter. I don't know what I expected to see her to look like, but when she started talking, my mind was finally able to associate a voice with the face. She looked like the voice I had heard over the phone, rough and hard. The makeup and gaudy earrings she wore distracted from the worn look on her face. Her large black eyes pierced through me making me feel like, feel as if she could read my mind. She hid her hair under a beautiful scarf that was wrapped like a turban, giving her tall, dark, and lean body a look of elegance. She could sense my discomfort when she hugged me as I walked in the door. The house was full of antique furniture, and that caught my eyes, and I began to relax a little. We ended up in her bedroom. She had it decorated really nice with bright colors. There was a little sitting area with a large entertainment system on one side of the room. I sat down and watched television while sorting through her arsenal of old movies. The smell of popcorn filled the room as I looked at the pictures on her dresser. The phone rang while We were in the middle of the movie. She stopped the movie while she talked loudly on the phone. I thought she would tell them to call back because she had company, but she kept on talking as I listened. The conversation wasn't very pleasant, and I could tell she was talking to a man. The speaking in tongue Christian had a different tongue now. She spoke the foulest language I had ever heard. The combination of curse words had never been put together the way she formed them that night. I heard a lot of cussing and cursed a bit myself, but I had never heard anything like this. It really began to make me nervous. When she finished the phone conversation, she calmly pressed the pause button and resumed the movie. The room was filled with silence, even with the movie on. Ruby Jewel talked a bit during the movie, trying to get a feel of what was on my mind. But she wasn't talking about the movie. Okay, um, that's, that's, that's all I'm going to go because... Well, this is just the introduction, and then we actually talk, start talking about Ruby Jewel's life. Ruby Jewel is a character 
in her backstory, it says she started her life behind the eight ball. The odds were stacked against her. She was born despite a failed attempt by her mother to abort her. When she met the author of this book, she began to spin the story of her life. Drugs, prostitution, and humor, and God are all woven into her life. Her story is not for the faint of heart. The next person I talked to name was Linda. She was a good girl who fell into hard times. Her story is about the sting of heroin. The well was too deep. She wasn't able to pull herself out, but not without damaging her body. Now, she needs a new liver and a kidney. She tells the author the story of her life in the streets. Her pain and suffering will tug at your heartstrings. So, I would love, you know, those who'd like to read, get this book. You can uh, get it, you can get the, the book. I'm going to say hardback, but it's not a hardback. But you can get a copy of the book. Or you, you can get the, uh, oh, what do you call this? The ebook. So, anyway. Confessions were from the heart. This is a really good book. I hate to be the one to say I wrote a good book, but it is good. Reading, uh, reading, uh, writing is something I love to do. So I have many books that I've written and several books that I've started. But I do, you know, I'm a senior citizen, but I, you know, I have to do something. If you can't work, no, I can't work because. I get tired. My back hurts when I stand up too long. So I, I spend my time writing and writing screenplays and just, you know, relaxing. But I do love stories. So I'm at 12 minutes and go out and get this book. And then even if you don't want to buy the book, you can read. Amazon has it where you can click on the book and you can read a a short synopsis of it, a few pages, and check out the book. And then you can check out the writing style. Uh, style. But those who you don't who don't know me, get going home another way. And it actually tells my life story and who I am. And good to talk to you guys. And I'm going to sign out. Bye-bye.